I am now the most miserable man living. Whether I shall ever be better, I cannot tell. I awfully forebode I shall not. To remain as I am is impossible. I must die or be better, it appears to me. In the anguish of these words, one of America's greatest presidents, Abraham Lincoln, describes his lifelong battle with depression. Throughout history, many famous and extraordinary people have felt the pain and suffering of depressive disorders. Some of them have shared their struggles publicly to bring awareness to this issue that millions of ordinary people also experience. In fact, over 30 million Americans may be affected by major depressive disorder. The annual cost to the economy is billions of dollars. The cost in human suffering is immeasurable. Going through it was, was like a roller coaster ride through hell. I felt that there was no way out. Uh, the pain was beyond description. The doctor said to me, Michelle, I think you need a psychiatrist. This is getting worse. And I remember reacting, I don't need a psychiatrist. I'm not crazy. Community life, family, friends, and workplaces all feel the impact of this debilitating illness. I went to work depressed and was able to get through the day. But when I came home, I got on the couch, curled up in a fetal position with a blanket, and I slept. I felt the burden of the responsibility of our children. I was the primary caregiver uh, because John just couldn't function. I was also confused as to what I should do as a person, as a relative of a depressed person. Like, what was the best thing to do? And depression doesn't discriminate. They come from different socioeconomic backgrounds, different religious affiliations, different educational backgrounds. Depression is so ubiquitous that it really can be anyone. Uh, it could be myself, it could be you, it could be the neighbor next door. Depression is often misunderstood and consequently misdiagnosed. Fortunately, in recent years, a clearer picture of the emotional and the physical symptoms of depression has emerged. Depression is a painful illness, and the pain is real. The good news is there is hope for all those who suffer and for the loved ones who accompany them on their journey through the darkness. As Alice knows from first-hand experience, when depression goes untreated, even the most vibrant and self-sufficient people can be devastated. Hey, how are you? Doing? Oh, how you doing? Paris. Mm. Mm. It's so good to it's see so you. It's so good to see you. You're beautiful as usual. My mom, before she was depressed, is a hoot. She is a very creative soul. And we're having our fashion show on the 14th. She has about 10 projects going on at any given time. She has a lot of friends, and I think that's part of what was so hard when she started to slip into that hole is because people came to her when they needed help and advice, and it was just shocking that they couldn't turn to this person anymore and that she actually needed them. This is so hot, and you know what I like about these outfits? They're intergenerational. In 2001, Alice experienced a series of stressful personal events, culminating with the fear that her sister may have been killed in the terrorist attacks of September 11th. From the right window in my bedroom, I could actually see the two um, spires at the top of the World Trade Center, and I got up and looked out the window and saw all of the smoke. It was unreal. My sister was working in the World Financial Center. She almost lost her life with the debris. After 9-1-1, I spiraled. It was just too much, one thing after another, after another, after another. I could sleep 20 hours a day to avoid experiencing the hell that I was in. She could not get out of bed. She, it seemed like 
she was moving through quicksand or slow motion. Like, we just couldn't reach her. I can only um, compare it to my body feeling like lead. Because Alice missed so much work, she lost her job at a university where she had worked for over 30 years. Eventually, she lost her health insurance as well. Depression is a leading cause of disability and loss of productivity throughout the world. In the U.S. alone, it is estimated to cost the economy $44 billion per year in lost productivity. My church prevented me from getting put out on the street. They paid months of my rent. Uh, things got so bad and so out of hand. The final humiliation for me as a per person who's always worked, um, at times had two jobs, was to have to go on welfare. What kept me from taking my life was that this would impact on my daughter in such a way I could not do that to my daughter. But I must tell you, uh, in the hell I was in, I felt death could not be worse. One of the terrible risks of depression is suicide. And that makes it very necessary for people to seek help, particularly if they're having suicidal thoughts. It's much more common for men to kill themselves than for women in this way, but it's also more common for women to attempt suicide than men. Each year, approximately 30,000 Americans lose their lives to suicide. And even when the consequences are not as dire, the pain of one person's untreated depression can affect a whole group of people. Because I called you the other day, you weren't answering your phone, I'm sure your friends are calling you too. They usually cheer you up. Mm. I just don't feel like talking to anybody right now. Mm -hmm. have any Depression doesn't only affect the person who has the illness. Depression reaches every relative, every friend of the depressed. I was angry because I was thinking, you know, just try to fight it. You're not sure how to help them. It's not something that can, you know, be corrected with, you know, let me write you a check and make it all better. And I think we're used to quick fixes, and depression isn't something that has a quick fix. I would have done anything, but I felt extremely helpless. You know, I don't feel like doing anything. Okay. But thank you, honey. I wanted my mother back. Alice's friends also wanted her back in their lives. Her friend Sandra did everything she could think of to help. Sandra would pay utility bills for me, and I didn't even know they were being paid. Hey, girl, I am so glad you were able to get over here today. Well, you know the babysitting stuff, so. Then she would come religiously uh, with the food or whatever she could do for me. So what are you working on? Well, a couple of things. Number one... I'm Only now can Sandra really share with Alice how much it affected her to see Alice in such pain. You know, I didn't realize how painful it was for you. I do know that it was, at certain points, painful for me to watch because I'm like saying, wait a minute, this is not the Alice that I know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so how do you help people? You know, so you do whatever you can. So if it's like bring you a meal, if it's, you know, pay a bill. One of the things I appreciated about you, although you may have thought it, I don't know, you know, not fully understanding depression, but you never said to me, snap out of it. I thought it. I did think it, and I kept saying, I don't understand. Yeah. But after seeing the extent mm -hmm. that you were going through, I mean, days of not being able to get out of the bed. I think um, you have to absolutely urge them continuously to seek help, professional, someone who's used to dealing with this. It is a disease. It is not something to be brushed off casually. And the sooner that depressed person can find help um, and get that support that they need, the sooner everyone in their circle can have that person back. Though Alice's struggle was difficult, she persevered. She finally found a successful treatment plan through a program for people whose depression is difficult to treat. With my spiritual connection, uh, friends like you for one, uh, family, uh, concerned and uh, caring professionals, girl, I was able to come up 
and out. And better, and better. You're such a precious. <laughs> it can be very difficult for the family members because the depressed person doesn't want to do anything about it. It's part of the illness to not want to do things in general. So they don't want to do something about their depression. They need to do what they can to help their depressed loved one get the treatment, stick with the treatment, keep going, not let them get frustrated, keep reminding them that there are multiple treatments that are often helpful and just because one doesn't help doesn't mean the other isn't helpful.